Hey guys, welcome to part 3 of our KH Director initial setup video. So up to this point we've showed you how to properly connect the KHD tubing to the doser, calibrate the dosing pumps, and set fill levels for your KHD containers. In this video we'll first show you how to enable the KH Director. We'll then show you how to calibrate the KH Director's pH probe, then configure the KH Director's test settings so that your results are as accurate as possible. To get started, we must first enable the KH Director. You'll find this option by going to the KH Director settings page located under the Probe and Sensor Controls category. Here is where you will find all the settings related to the KH Director itself. To enable the KHD, check the KH Director enabled box, then click on Save Changes. The next step will be to connect the KHD probe. Take the pH probe that was packaged with the KHD and connect it to the back of the KH Director's BNC port. Insert the probe connector over the port and turn the connector to lock it in place. With the probe connected, you can now begin the calibration phase. For this process, you will need to have both pH 4 and pH 7 calibration fluids on hand. You will also need two sample cups for holding small amounts of each fluid. You can prepare these samples by pouring pH 4 fluid into one cup and pH 7 fluid into another cup. To start the calibration, click on the button that says Calibrate Electrode and click Yes to start. Take the KHD probe and let it sit in the sample of pH 4 fluid, then click OK to begin calibrating with the pH 4 fluid. Give the probe a few minutes for this process to complete. Once this part is complete, take the probe out of the pH 4 fluid, then rinse and dry the probe completely. This will prevent any cross-contamination between the fluids and water used for rinsing. Next, place the probe in the sample of pH 7 fluid, then click OK. Once the probe is finished calibrating, click OK to save the calibration data. Now that the probe is calibrated, you can go ahead and install the probe onto the cage director. When installing the probe, make sure the rubber ring is correctly positioned and the locking nut is tight enough so that it creates a watertight seal. If you need to create a tighter seal, you can do so by rubbing a thin coat of Vaseline over the rubber ring. When it comes to servicing the probe, we recommend you calibrate every 2-4 to four weeks. Calibrating at these intervals will allow the KHD to maintain maximum accuracy. It's also important to note that the KHD probe should always be kept in water to prevent it from drying out. If your KH director does not perform tests for more than 3 days, we recommend removing the probe and storing it in liquid until you're ready to use it again. Naturally, the KHD will always store a small amount of water inside the measuring cell to prevent the probe from drying out. With each test, this fluid is flushed out and replaced with new water. Lastly, a probe that has not been in use for more than a few weeks should always be recalibrated before being put to use. Now we get to the part where we configure basic KHD test settings, starting with assigning dosing pump channels to specific KHD functions. Under the Pumps for Measurement section, select the dosing pump channel you want to use for your water sample. For example, we use dosing pump number 1 as our water sample pump, so we'd select dosing pump 1 for the water sample function. Next, select the dosing pump channel you want to use for your reagent. In our example, we used dosing pump channel 2. So we'd select dosing pump 2 for the reagent function. Lastly, select the dosing pump that will be assigned as the wastewater pump. Once these pumps have been assigned, click Save Changes. The next step will be to set up your water sample settings. In the Sample Volume field, select the water sample size you want the cage director to use for each test. Keep in mind, the larger the water sample, the greater the accuracy. Next, click on the calculator icon and type in the inner diameter of the tube that is being used. The inner diameter of the tube included with your KHD is 4 mm. Next, measure the total length of your water sample tube and type it into the length field. 
Be sure to also take the length of the doser tube itself into account. The length of the beige tube that is coming out of the doser itself is about 4.7 inches long. Once that is done, click OK and the sample tube volume will automatically be calculated for you. Now we get to prepare the KH director for its first KH test. Since we've already primed the reagent line in our part 2 video, we can skip a step and go right into flushing the KH director measurement cell. At this time, make sure all your lines are properly positioned and connected. Your water sample line should be empty and placed in an area where you want the assigned pump to pull the water sample from. The wastewater line and emergency drain should also be empty and already positioned above the wastewater bin. Lastly, the KHD probe should already be installed and fastened with the compression fitting. Once all those points have been checked, click Save Changes and then click the Flush Measurement Cell button to allow the KHD and doser to perform its first water sample flush. At this time, check for any leaks around the probe compression fitting. If you see any leaks, click on Stop All Actions, then click Empty Measurement Cell Completely. Once the cell is emptied, check the compression fitting and make sure it is not loose. You can also apply some Vaseline around the rubber ring to create a better seal. Once that is done, retry the flush measurement cell step. Once the measurement cell is flushed, your cage director will be ready for its first cage test. You can trigger a manual test anytime by clicking on the Start Measurement Now button. You can now go ahead and set up your KH control settings, measurement schedules, and alarm conditions. Start by typing in your desired KH value. Here is where you specify at what value the KH director should maintain your alkalinity. For safety precautions, you can also have the KHD trigger an alarm if the KH test result ever deviates outside of the allowed KH limits. To activate this alarm feature, click here. If you wish to disable the cage director during an alarm, click here. Your upper and lower cage limits for the alarm feature can be set up here. In order for the cage director to automatically test your water, you must specify how many times per day you want the KHD to test. That can be done here. You can have the unit test anywhere between 1 to 24 times per day. You can also specify the starting time for when the first test of the day should take place. The testing times that come after the first test will be automatically split evenly throughout the day. For example, if you wanted to test two times per day, starting at 10 a.m., the KHD would automatically calculate the time of the second test, which would happen at 10 p.m. The KH director performs its test using lab-grade principles. However, if you have another testing instrument which you feel provides a more reasonable KH test result, you can adjust your KH director's final test results here. If you wish to record your test results, click here. The measurement time shown here will be based on the time zone settings of your primary device. If you have not yet adjusted these settings, you can do so by going to the General Settings page. Simply select the correct time zone and your measurement times will be in line with your correct time. Once you're done adjusting your settings, Click Save Changes and your cage director will now be ready to use. Thanks guys for watching this video. If you have any questions for us, feel free to post on our GHL support forum or send us an email for one-on-one -on -one support. Links and contact info can be found in the description box below. Until next time folks, take care.